Good morning, welcome back to the shop. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Not wood, sorry everybody. Well, it's wood related though, technically. I have a friend, he's an amazing uh, wood turner, and a hell of a guy, great teacher, good instructor. Um, check out Woodland Turnings. Um, give, give Roger some love, uh, Roger Turnbaugh. So, we were sitting in the chat room, the Wood Whisperer chat room the other day, talking, and I've always thought about making a branding iron, and old Rog said, hey, I'd love one of those too. And we started kicking around some ideas, and what he's looking for is a, a round one, which is interesting, but also um, a small one, try to get things as tiny as I can. So what we're going to do today is first experimentation, just to see if I can even pull it off, if it'll work, what I what I think in my head will work, should work, but I'm, I want to do a test. So, branding irons I would typically want to do in brass, um, and I've got a stick of brass, but I don't want to use up any brass if I don't have to on my tests. So I've got this chunk of aluminum that I turned down to one inch, one inch diameter, and it's just flat and faced. It's not even great uh, surface finish or anything like that. It's just chunk of aluminum for testing. And uh, we're going to get it mounted up here in the CNC, and I'm going to show you some of my uh, work holding for the CNC when I do metal, at least smaller metal parts. Um, and I'll bring you in and show you that. So we're going to give it a shot at engraving or putting together a, a test branding iron. This will, it's funny, aluminum will actually do it as a branding iron. It won't last real long because it'll soften, but it'll be enough to make a test and I can do a few test burns to see how well it's going to do um, and whether this concept is even going to be viable. So I'm going to get you brought up a, a little closer and I'll show you my setup for holding this little piece of little piece of aluminum so I can machine the end of it um, and we'll bring you back. Okay so what I've got is on the middle of the little X wing uh, the cross track that I've got is I I machine this area with the machine. This is not a boo-boo. This was done on purpose. I promise. Um, I machined a flat area here. And this surface here, these two edges are a square reference. And I've got this screwless vise that I use. And I just stick it on there and I mush it. We'll double check everything is clean. And uh, we just get it smushed. And then I butt, I butt it against the end and against this edge so it's just a little registration surface to uh, <clears throat> to get it held in and then I take these steel strap clamps and we just bring them in through the T's and we do it bolt head down so you'll see I'll assemble another one here and you can see it but there are these little notches cut into the sides and I've got these uh, these little for a milling machine, these are really handy little steps, and they hold a strap, a strap down on, on the opposite end. These little steps, the the clamp sort of registers in those little steps, and then you just tighten down your you tighten down your 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 nut here, and it'll pull everything down. You just want to be one step above level on this, so that the toe of the strap is pointing down. I'm gonna. Shift the camera around a little bit and you can see an assembly of this here real quick. Okay. Alright, so we've got you sort of spun around and zoomed in a little bit here. Make sure our vise is well seated. I don't have this toe clamp over here taken care of yet. It's not tightened down. It's just that finger pressure on it right now. So the first thing we do is take a bolt. And we slide it down through the T-track. Oops. Slide that into the T-track here. And it won't stand up, I guess. Silly thing. Stand up. And then we take our stick uh, flat steel and make sure we have the sharp edge down because we want the sharper edges. So there's a chamfer down in there just for you know ease of use. I put the chamfer up so that the, the toe clamp, this little guy, will uh, have something to bite into a little better. And I just set it sort of in that area, in the slot. And then we raise it a bit and we put it on the step that keeps this side just slightly higher. And we take a washer and a nut and we just pull that bolt straight up into the T-track and 
Then we'll take a wrench and tighten it down. Just take a wrench and give these a good cinching. And as I get them, I'll get them snuggish. It's a technical term, snuggish. Just enough. And then I'm going to take a mallet and just make sure we are facing up against those registration surfaces. And that way, my uh, that way my locations will be where I expect them to be. Let me give these a good cinching down here, and that holds the vise in. We're just going to mm -hmm. take our part. There's a V-notch here. Can you see in the jaw? Well, ignore this. <laughs> that was where you crash an end mill into the machine. There's a V-slot right here, so it'll register this round edge, round bit here. And so basically what we've done is we've made sure that it's pretty vertical. It's held really well. Now we're ready to get the CNC up, and we'll do a, a centering and flattening phase here. Okay, first thing I'll do is home. There we go, now that's all set. We'll take and bring our machine over out a little bit, come over here, I'm gonna change out this cutter to a V-bit so I can center on the, what I'm gonna try to do is center on my material here. And then I'll switch back out to the end mill. So the first operation is a uh, roughing flattening facing. Basically it's facing. And we'll put a quarter inch collet in here. Because that's what that in mill that cutter is. I'm giving you this as sort of the real time setup times, pretty much. Um, I did move some stuff around and take a few parts off the CNC, but incidental sort of processes. And that's not, that doesn't have to be super tight right now because it's just a, an indicator, an indexer. And so now we're going to come over. I'm just driving it down to the spot I want. Get real close here. And I'm mainly concerned with getting my X and Y correct because there's no room for a, for a missing on this. Yeah, we're getting close there. So I'm going to try to find a... I don't know what I'm trying to do. I want to make it so I can see this as well as possible. Uh, to make sure that the the point is right where I want it. I'm not sure if I need more light. No, nah, that doesn't seem to be useful. Oh, maybe that'll be useful. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to bring you guys in a little bit here. Okay, so I've got you up closer now, and I'm going to put a, put a little light here. That might be too bright for you guys. This will let me barely check in. Actually, I'm going to have a hard time because I need two hands to do this. So hopefully you can see my intention here. What I'm trying to do is get the point of that bit centered right over, drop it down a little bit, get it right over the center of where my, I might need to do some double inspecting here. Okay, let's get a little bit lower here. trying to get as low as I can because it'll help me make sure I'm centered, but I'm also making sure I'm not on it yet because I don't need to be yet. Okay, now I'm going to start moving around after I see where I am. I'm just looking for where the center thing or the centering of the spiral is and should be very close to touching now. Almost, we're a few thou. And get it. There we go. That's 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 a four thou or five thou off the top of this. Now I can inspect things from various angles. God, that looks really close already. I'm gonna I'm gonna come towards me just a tiny bit. 
you probably can't even see these movements. They are literally a thou at a time. And I'm really just looking at that point and trying to get it centered on my little center pipe there. Feel like I might Yes, I want to go that way just a tiny bit. That's about ten thou that way. Now you see why I'm using a pointed cutter. Oh, you can't see. Now you can't see why I'm using a pointed. I'm using a pointed cutter because that's going to have the the finest point down in there. And I think now it's time to grab a grab the magnifying apparatus. See if I can get these to uh, cooperate here. Sorry, this is a bad view for you guys, but it's a great view for me. So now we're going to switch out the cutter since we've z zeroed our X and Y with the pointy bit. Now we can put in the regular um, end mill that we're going to use to flatten the top surface. Um, to do that, so we'll pull that out, put that in, and then we'll Z zero. We'll find Z zero. So, what you didn't see before I started moving things around is in Mach three, I zeroed my work axis, uh, my work coordinates for X and Y, so that I was on the center, so I can always return to that now whenever I change the bits. So that's basically what we're doing. Is I use that pointy bit to make Z X and Y zero. And now I'm putting in the carbide end mill to find uh, Z0. And this will be the one that will do the roughing end, uh, the roughing of the top surface. So that's that. All right, so we're now running a program to uh, flatten the top surface. Uh, the surface finish isn't great. I'm still learning how to cut aluminum. Um, but it gets the flat top, and we're ready for V-carving next. All right, and then we're uh, going to change out the bit. After it's been flat, I'm going to put it in the V carving bit, and uh, we'll find Z zero again with this strip of paper. But because I could, I had set my work coordinates of X and Y zero, I go right back to the very center of the part because I did that earlier. And that's why we do our homing and set zero. So now we'll go and run the V carving program. So that was about an hour of runtime, and it's a little rough because aluminum doesn't like to be cut really, but it came out, you know, surprisingly, surprisingly decent. I don't know if we're going to be able to get autofocus to cooperate here, but we'll try. Bear with it. Will it focus? It will not. Back it out. All right. But you know, you get kind of the idea. Came out all right. It's 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 rough, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do a tiny little bit of filing, and then we're gonna heat it up and see what happens. All right. So I've got it in my Jacobs chuck. The whole idea is this is gonna be used in a chuck on a lathe, on a wood lathe actually. But for the moment, I've just got this in my metal lathe chuck at the moment, and we're gonna heat it up. Hopefully, only it. The aluminum is gonna dissipate the heat really fast, so I'm gonna probably have to move quick. Um, and we'll just. Try and do a quick little scorch and see what happens. So let's get some heat going. Okay, we'll see how fast this dissipates all of its warmth in here. Take, a, take me a glove to this area, put it in the tailstock. Okay, it's in the tailstock. I'm going to bring you over. Okay, I'm working kind of fast here because it's still hot, so bring this up. 
real close and then just press it on in. Getting no scorchy sounds though, so I don't know that it actually burnt. Oh yeah, it's doing it. I need to get it hotter and aluminum is terrible, so that's part of my problem. But it does prove the concept does work. Just push it on there good. I'm gonna get the chuck tighter on that here if I can. There we go. Push that on there nicely. And it did do the job, so I'll pull this out. Yeah. Proof of concept is there. There's some there's some tiny problems, obviously. Let's get you some light. Can you see that better? Not really. Just zoom me in there. Zoom me in here. So that is pretty cool. It's not as even as I need it to be because it's the aluminum didn't do very good at it. Uh, hold on, focus, 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 back, come on, whatever, all right, we'll zoom you back out a little bit, there, so, you know, you kind of get the idea, that's not bad for the first try, um, it'll be better the next time, because the next time I won't have uh, aluminum to shred on me, it'll be brass, but, yeah, a couple of parts of it did not come through very good because the aluminum sucks, but here, can you see it? Focus, focus, focus. Focus now. Focus now. Oh, now. Focus now. Focus! Focus on my fingers, please. Sneezy. It probably focused too while I was sneezing. Back to auto. Focus on that now, please. There you go. There you go. Now you're focusing. So you see, it didn't get missing the L in Woodland. And the N is backwards. Hey, look at that. The whole thing is backwards. These two things are completely... Oh, you know why? Because I didn't flip those around. That's why... I know exactly what that is. But, Ed, as a proof of concept, it's there. It's definitely there. It will work. It's definitely going to need to make sure your flat bottom, though. you got a good flat bottom on it. So, Anyway, that is an attempt at a branding iron.